all the mistletoe I'm gonna get to know you better This Christmas And as we trim the tree How much fun it's gonna be together This Christmas The fireside is blazing bright We're caroling through the night Food for the Soul Media Group and the I Am Talitha Kume Show with yours truly, Talitha Kume and my baby Big Bobby B on our YouTube station and FB page, Food for the Soul Media Group. And don't forget you guys to like our social media pages on FB at Food for the Soul Media Group, I Am Talitha Kume, Big Bobby B, and on Instagram, Food for the Soul Media Group, I Am underscore Talitha Kume, the real Big Bobby B, and Orle underscore worldwide, and subscribe to our YouTube stations. So going into 2023, we just wanted to send a shout out to all of those who donated and volunteered their time to make some toy wishes come true for some kids and parents in need here in Las Vegas. And why are you laughing? I was trying not to sneeze. <clears throat> so guys, we just wanted to spread some, some positive December news and holiday cheer this season. But before we get started, we are looking for 2023 sponsors to help us keep doing what we do, which is pouring into people, giving you news you can use, discussing hard topics, and continuing to show you that you matter and more. And anything helps. So if you like our show, consider donating. You can cash app us at Burris Creates or PayPal us at Food for the Soul. And please share, share, share. If you like the video, share, share. And so we are back, and boy, we have a lot to discuss, man. Girl, he was waiting for that. A lot to talk about. Look, we started this show back in 2020 during the pandemic, yeah. so that way we can lift our family and friends up and spread love and cheer. Yeah. And it feels like right now we need it more than we did then. We absolutely I'm not even gonna lie to you, it's been a dark hour. We absolutely do. It's been a really, really dark hour, and we um we just want to give back. Yeah. We just want to give back. So, if you're just tuning in, sit back and relax at home while we present the third annual TNB's Christmas with Friends special. I want to talk about what we've been doing this year. What have we been doing this year? Bobby, what have you been doing this year? Because you guys, you missed us. We haven't been around all of 2021. All of 2022. <laughs> all of 2022. We haven't been around in all of 2022. Yeah, I'm getting my, I'm getting my years. It's crazy. This year, I've pulled away from social on all the lives. You know, just to do a lot of studying. You know, things aren't kind of, I feel I've done this year is um, take these um, sound engineer classes mm -hmm. daily online for myself, School of Hard Knocks. And I've been learning a lot. And um, it's good that I've been sending my practice to, to the people that I've always not had to hear. Okay. And getting back you know, good feedback, like I can kind of grow from here now. It's not just, it's not just a tool. I did two boxes for the Phil Harmonic. The thing about that was, <clears throat> I did an even bigger piece for him first, and they said it was too big, so they rejected it. So I donated what I felt were the two boxes I've ever made, two best boxes I've ever made. I donated that to the Phil Harmonic. They sold, so I lost. It. Yeah, hadn't been a real busy year for me as far as like outward creation towards giving to other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been giving, but I haven't done like as many projects. Yeah. Like the year before, where I did several boxes a month. So oh yeah, it was, absolutely. It was serious. So. But I feel like we elevated you this year only because we were in different circles this year. So with you being able to um, donate to all of the uh, silent auctions that you did this year with the Philharmonic, a dessert before dinner, 
um, those different projects, uh, Project 150, uh, NAACP. I, I feel like that your name is, is now circulating in those communities. So I think that was really cool. Yeah. And we did a lot of vendor events. We did a lot of um, vendor events that were cool. That that was the Virgil Box. The NAACP. Yeah. That was the Virgil Box. I, I don't remember. I don't know. That was a beautiful box. Mm -hmm. Golly. That was a Louis Vuitton box. Uh, I passed out a lot of great art. Yep, you mm -hmm. really, really did. And so, I'm proud of you, babe. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, babe, doing what you do. And uh, we came out here, like we said, in 2020. We jumped, and we have not looked back. So, we're happy, and we're just kind of chugging along, making our way. Uh, for me, I did not do my podcast this year at all. I uh, had a lot of things going on um, uh, since the passing of my dad. It's like the first full year without him. So it was really, really hard for me to kind of get back in the swing of things um, coming back off of that. And so I just kind of uh, tried to weigh what I should do and some of the things that, you know, were kind of weighing me down. And I just didn't feel like talking to you guys. So I didn't. So I didn't do anything uh, this year, even though I was excited to kind of get back to you guys, I just didn't. But I got really busy at work. And so that was good for me to uh, kind of pour myself into my work and, and elevate there and make some things happen there. But I have been working on a documentary about him. That's actually been amazing. Like me and Bobby got to travel to Kansas City, uh, his hometown, Houston. Cali and Dallas, yeah, and it's it's been a real labor of love, and, and, and it's been really hard to complete, actually, but I want you guys to look for it next year in 2023, so I am, I am declaring and decreeing, as they say, that uh, we'll have it out next year for uh, me to just pay homage to my dad, Dr. Willie Bowden, who was a great person, so that's kind of what I've been working on. Um, but you guys, I want to go ahead and start the show, okay? So, first, I actually wanted to talk about the celebration of Christmas, whether to celebrate or not to celebrate. What do you guys think? So, in 2022, a lot of debate has been surrounding Christmas and whether to celebrate it or not anymore. As the pandemic hit, it has continued to open our eyes to so many traditions and beliefs even religious traditions and beliefs that we may have gotten really wrong. And as, as many are leaving their faith and embracing other things, we here at Food for the Soul still believe there is a purpose and a happiness that comes with Christmas. So we are still rocking with Christmas. But let's look at some of the reasons why some Christians and others don't, don't feel like they should be celebrating Christmas. So one argument against Christmas is that the traditions surrounding the holiday have origins in paganism. And if anybody knows what paganism is, I hope you guys know what paganism is. I didn't write down the definition. It also stated that Jesus was most likely not born on this day, but we take time to honor him as believers during this time. And the Bible does not give a command to have to celebrate the holiday or not to celebrate the holiday. So really, the choice is it's up to you. So what do you think about it? Celebrate. I do. I want to celebrate. I, I, I like it. Um, there's no harm to it. it yeah. You know, it doesn't say that it's bad to celebrate it, even though it started from paganism. Um, it 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 it, uh, it started to infiltrate the church. The church decided to use it as a way to um, honor Jesus' birth, even though he uh, probably wasn't born on December 25th. But yeah. nonetheless, I like it. Yeah, for sure. I'm here for it. As we celebrate this Christmas season, here are cool. Um, here, are, here are a list of a few cool gifts that made the most popular ball list. Yeah. So if you haven't purchased any gifts yet, or you want to exchange crap that you already bought, <laughs> here goes the list. Let's get right to it. Number one is a Savvy Girl backpack cooler chair. I don't know what that is, but it's fifty-two dollars at Amazon. Yeah. It's a backpack cooler and chair all in one, making it a super creative gift idea for anyone who loves to camp, hike or spend hours at the beach with mom or dad or do Girl Scouts kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and it also could be good because out here we see a lot of sports activity. Not saying that they're not anywhere else, but out here it's so hot, man. Take so it could, so it could it could really help with any type of sporting events you have going on with your kids. You can use it as a um, as a chair and then it has a cooler system in it where you can keep 
all of your cool drinks and everything. So I thought that was cool. And number two is a 100 movies scratch off poster. And it looks like it's about $15 at a place called Uncommon Goods and that's online. And it's an ultimate gift for film buffs to inspire them to watch or rewatch 100 classic movies. And it also doubles as Waterboard. And I, you guys, it's really, it's really great. It's really great. Hey, I remember when that would have been like 100 favorite books and scratch off toasted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. And number three, personalized glass arts. $13 also at Amazon. Uh, capture a cherished moment of a loved one. It's a unique glass plaque designed to look like a Spotify track. I don't know what that is. Pick their favorite song, and uh, once they scan the code, they just start playing. That's pretty dope. Yeah, I've That's seen. Dope. I, I've seen. I've seen some people doing those things. So this glass plaque, you can kind of put a picture of your loved ones in there or something and then it has the Spotify track at the bottom that's engraved into the plaque and yeah. when you push it almost like a QR code it'll play their favorite song kind of like opening up a card with the song and something like that. It's fire. Number four is our adventure book photo album and this is $24 at Amazon and it's inspired by the animated Pixar film Up. And this adorable adventure scrapbook has 80 pages waiting to be filled up with your adventures, favorite photos, love notes, and each book comes with postcards and sticker, not stickers. And I think that this is a cool gift to give um, to family members, somebody maybe a little bit older that, that likes to collect pictures. And um, you guys can scrap it, scrap your book, and, and keep that around for, for generations and generations to be able to look at. Yes. Number coming in at number five, what a difference that they can make personal prints or personalized prints. Mm -hmm. It's $20 at Etsy. Mm -hmm. Surprise the matriarch of your family by putting all their kids and grandkids' birthdays in one pretty print up to like 20. Uh, it's also a thoughtful way to celebrate anniversaries and other, other meaningful occasions. And so our um, our aunt doesn't know this yet, yeah. and she's gonna see this on Christmas Day. But we have got her. We got her that. Anyway, but so those are great gifts to give for Christmas this year. And the reason why I came up with that list, even though I found some of those, I just wanted to personalize some of the stuff. You know, we 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 kind of run around, and now people are not running around as much you know, spending arm and leg on different things, but these gifts are affordable and they're meaningful. So I think that there's something that your family members are gonna keep and they're gonna be very excited to get. That's what I think. So that's the reason why we chose these gifts. And now I wanna talk about cool Christmas movies to binge watch, if you haven't seen them already, while you guys are home during the holiday break from all of the madness, whether you're with your, intimate, your immediate family or you're hanging out with your extended loved ones or friends. And so the first movie, you guys, is uh, that we we like, I want to say we like, I'm not sure, Bobby is real picky on stuff, but The Flight Before Christmas starring Mayim Bialek, I don't even know how to pronounce her last name, Mayim Bialek, Blossom, you know, and um, Cat. Call me Cat. Call me Cat, yeah. So that show. So The Flight Before Christmas, really cute movie about her um, having to catch a flight to, I want to say she was catching a flight to see her family, and I think she ended up getting stranded or something like that or whatever, but it was a cool movie. So The Flight Before Christmas, I don't recall which platform it was on, you guys. We've been watching so many Christmas movies on Tubi, uh, YouTube, uh, Hallmark, uh, Peacock, Netflix, so I don't know, but if you can find it, it's a really cute movie, and a family-oriented too, so the family can find it. Uh, coming in at number dos, The Mistletoe Mix-Up. I guess it was all right. <laughs> it, well, Bobby, you know we watched that doggone movie and you said that it was all right. Oh yeah, it was the Lawrence Brothers. Yes. And uh, their other brother who looks like a wide face caulking. Anyway, that movie was cute. It was really cute. It was probably one of my favorite items because of this. A lot of, the, a lot of movies she had me watch, watching there this whole Christmas season were you know, pretty garbage. They so were. I fell asleep during like 85% of them. But we so, picked we pick five of the ones that we really enjoyed, except for this last one. We don't even know about it yet. But the third one was something from Tiffany starring Insecures, Kendrick Sampson, and Zoe Deutsch. Uh, Deutsch. 
I think that's how you pronounce her name. I, I, I know I am butchering all these people's names, but this one was a very, very cute movie yes. um, about him and his daughter. And they were just looking for, for love during Christmas. And it was interesting how everything turned out. I don't want to talk about the movie. I don't want to give it away because I want you guys to watch it. But it was a really good movie. And I know that that was on Prime, I believe. I think that was on Prime. One of those Another movie that we didn't, yeah. we didn't know we can't remember that word. Yeah. It's not here nice. Yeah. With Hillary Burton uh, and the Family Ties, Michael Gross and Meredith Baxter. Burning. Yeah. Yeah. Our family ties. They came back. It's a pretty good movie. But it was a it was a really cute movie. Those two really movies right there are my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I saw them, like I said, it was pretty garbage. Anyway, they they weren't all they weren't all bad. The last one is the Cinderella Story, um, Christmas Wish, and it's starring Laura Mirano and Greg Sulkin. This was a really cute movie, and it's just similar to. The Cinderella story, but it had a Christmas spin to it. Yeah, so that was the one that, that Bobby didn't remember at all. I don't remember if he was asleep. He was suffering from a toothache for the past, for the past, no, for the past almost month and a half or so, and it just started getting worse in the past two weeks. So he could have been asleep, y'all. I don't remember. But it was a cute movie, uh, very girly, and I like really girly movies, and I love romantic movies. I'm sappy like that. And so if you're interested in, and you like the Cinderella story, Try that A Cinderella Story Christmas Wish. It was really cute. So do you have a new Christmas movie this year? Like, has your movie changed? I remember last year, I was saying that The Best Man Holiday was my jam. It'll continue to be my jam, don't get me wrong. But now, this year, I would have to say that Daddy's Home 2 has got to be my favorite for the past couple of years. It is the perfect casting with Will Ferrell, John Lithgow, and Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson. I love, love, love that movie. It is hilarious. Yeah, Daddy's Home 2 has taken a lot of the points from Home Alone 1. Really? It's taken a lot of the points. Because you, your favorite movie was Home Alone, right? Yeah, it was hard. Uh -huh. So is it is it the same? Or you, you feel like Daddy's Home 2 is your, one of your favorites now like me? Yeah, it's right. Okay. What's up in there? And Elf, okay, yeah. so you like, and that, so that's two Will Ferrell movies that, that we like. And Will Ferrell actually just came out with another um, holiday movie called Spirited or something like that with, Ryan, with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah he's and he, you fell Christmas. asleep. Yeah, I mean, you fell asleep during that too. He's yeah. trying to own Christmas like Mariah Carey, but Mariah Carey, she already owns Christmas. So. Oh, she has it. one little Christmas album. It's not like she that, owns. That song, she did, though, please. Uh, whatever. Times All I day. want for Christmas is you. Da, la, la. Yeah, yeah where okay. you're at, you're here. We got it. So let's talk about our favorite non-Christmas movie this year. Yeah. I really, really like, and I had to narrow it down, you guys, but I really, really like uh, the movie The Devil You Know. It was a movie produced by Omar Epps and starring him and a great all-star cast of him, William Catlett, Glenn Turman, Curtis Cook, Vanessa Bell Calloway, Calloway Michael Ely, Michael Beach, uh, BJ Britt, and Theo Rossi. And it's um, it, the movie theme is actually an ex-con Marcus Cohen's is trying to turn over a new leaf with the support of his family and after learning that one of his brothers may have been involved in a horrific crime he struggles with the limits of loyalty and that's what it says it's about but to me it was so much more I love the movie because it was about a strong patriarch leader in Glenn Turner who played the father and we just don't see movies like that anymore we just don't see movies that honor the father and allow the father he's not a coward um he doesn't let his wife run him over and tell him what to do and you know no father can be perfect but it shows the family bond of how they really respected their dad and so that's probably my favorite movie this year that i saw that i really wasn't expecting for it to be as good as it was but i really really liked it yeah and i'm gonna have to say raymond and ray uh, Apple movie. Raymond and Ray? Yeah, with Ethan Hawke and Ethan okay. McGregor. Uh -huh. um, they really slayed that movie. It was, it, was a, it was like a creeper because you didn't expect it to be that good. But when he, when the story unfolded and the dad was really discovered, it was another daddy movie. And, um, you know, all his other sons started coming around and it was his reasons for what he did were all uncovered. Mm -hmm. And the way he left his son set up after he got out of here, it was 
yeah, good movie. I want to give it away, but if you have Apple, go ahead and watch it. Say the movie again. Raymond and Ray. Yeah, and I didn't really. It's just you have to once you get into it, you're like, yeah. okay, they they wrote this. Okay. This wasn't a, it wasn't yeah. So we also want to talk about movies that are coming out in next year that look pretty cool. And again, we try to pick movies that were not dark in nature because so many movies are dark uh, this this you know in this season. And so we came up with our first one, which is I spent the last seven years of my life living out my wildest dreams. Bianca. Rocky, my dad, Damien. How long were you locked up? 18 years, bro. Just got out last week. Glad to have you back out, huh? I know I've been away a long time, but I kept myself in shape. I still got gas in the tank. Come by the gym. I was a Rocky fan. This is not the same. No, but this is not the same. It's it's the same. This is it's like it's a, it's Skittles a, and steak. It's a different face because it's Michael B. Jordan, but I believe that it's the same in nature. It's just evolved into the 2020 or the 20th century version of Rocky with, with you know, an African-American lead. Mm -hmm. so coming in at two is The Little Mermaid. And Little Mermaid, you guys, it's been so much controversy around this doggone movie just because they decided to add a black lead and not a um, a white lead in the character, even though the cartoon was, you know, a, a, a white lead. Number four, 80 for Brady. This movie is inspired by the true story of four best friends and New England Patriots fans who take a life-changing trip to the Super Bowl uh, to see their hero, Tom Brady, play. Aren't you tired of the same old boring lives? Let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is no place for four old women. This could be Tom's last one. He's almost 40. That's like 80 in people years. Yeah, we're 80 in people years. I just really need this trip. It is so great to meet you. Beauty has no expiration date. Chris, I didn't flirt. 
he did. There's so much here to do. We could even win these tickets. This is a spicy wings contest. Bring the pain! I could use a little spice. I know her! If you black out, who you want me to call? An ambulance? Ah! These are good. Very good. Oh, careful, they're high dosage. High dosage? That's what's up. Yeah. Well, now, get your ears ready and tune in for our beautiful musical guest, Tiffany, as she blesses us with a Christmas song. Thank you, Tiffany. This is Tiffany's first time on the show, and she is an amazing performer. We just had an opportunity to see her last month in the color purple in Kansas City, and we, we flew all the way out there to see her, and she was awesome. So if you're ever in the Kansas City area, check her out. Look for her. Her name is Tiffany Harper, and she's starring in all types of uh, cool productions out there. But I want to hear about this Christmas treat that you are doing for us this year. It's called Sunrise. Why do you name it Sunrise? Bobby? Because it's just real uplifting. Okay. I took some pineapple and I brined my pineapple and uh, sweet water and uh, cinnamon. Are you going to show us how to do it? Or are you going to, are you going to I'm, show I'm, them how done. you did it? Okay. I, I, so I was about to slice really thin. Okay. So it's really, you know, I'm just working. Okay. I still want to be able to see something. Can we you give know, them something? What can we bring them a taste? We can bring them a taste in a minute. We'll bring them a taste in a minute. So you guys, we had a serious health scare for me after Thanksgiving this year. I ended up in the emergency room twice thinking that I was having a heart attack. And I ended up being diagnosed with high blood pressure and diabetes. So we have had to seriously change our eating habits. I cut down on pretty much everything, no more fast food. Bobby doesn't cook with any salt and I don't eat sweets too much at all. And I really try to stay away from juices and and teas and different things like that because I think that was my downfall. Really, I didn't drink a whole lot of, well, I drank a whole lot of soda too. I drank a whole lot of soda, I drank a whole lot of juice, or I drank a whole lot of tea actually. And so I've had to cut down on mainly all of that just to make sure uh, that I am healthy or I'm staying healthy and I'm staying out of the emergency room, you guys. But we are making an exception today 
for the show. So let's see how Bobby is going to make this delicious dessert, you guys. And we will be right back. Let's see what he's doing. What's up, fam? So here's that brine pineapple. There's a whole fresh pineapple. I cut it. I also cut a bunch of, cut some fine bananas, like little small squares. Did some fresh sugar crisp apples. Um, grapes. Yeah, and um, peaches. After you had the hard fat scare, you know, I'm like, I'm not fixing to be, you can't even leave me by myself because you want to have desserts. Man. I hate ambrosia. I don't want any ambrosia. Man, that's the right here, player. And look, I ground up some, some oatmeal and almonds. We're just gonna kind of put that right on top. Just to give it like a little, you know. Take a glass. And we're back. If you're just tuning in, I am Talitha Kume. And I'm Big Bobby B. And you're tuned in to our third annual TMB Christmas with Friends special on Food for the Soul Media Group. And before we go any further, we are looking for sponsors for our I Am Talitha Kume show in 2023. The I Am Talitha Kume Show will be keeping you in the know with news you can use, dope movie and food reviews, up-and-coming artists, and the spin of the week. So if you would like to be a sponsor, you can cash app us at Burris Creates or PayPal us at Food for the Soul. So with everything that's going on in the world, let's talk about some ways we can pay it forward a few times this year. So easy ways we can pay it forward, pay it backwards. Buy coffee for the person behind you in line. Compliment the first three people you talk to today or any day. Send a positive text message to five different people right now or anytime during the day. Encounter someone in customer service who is especially kind. Take an extra five minutes to tell their manager how kind they are. Smile at five strangers. Send a gratitude email to a coworker who deserves more recognition. Practice self-kindness and spend 30 minutes doing something you love. Leave a kind server the biggest tip you can afford. Take flowers or treats to the nurse's station at your nearest hospital. Run an errand for a family member who is busy. Put your phone away while in the company of others. Email or write to a former teacher who made a difference in your life. So that's our list, but what wasn't on the list is volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. So what I do uh, for a living now, I work for a company called the Girl Scouts. Some of you guys may have heard of it, and you may see me posting about it from time to time. But Bobby and I have had the opportunity to do so much volunteering since I've been working for the company, uh, since we moved out here in 2020. And I have got to tell you, that that is some of the most heartwarming, heartwarming service that you can do. Do you feel that way? Like when we go and volunteer for different organizations, um, it just does our heart uh, so much good to be able to know that we helped out in any type of way, even if it's setting up chairs or just delivering food or whatever it is. So I would say paying it forward, volunteer is a good way to go. It's a good, good way to go. And that wasn't on the list, but I would say that it is. Yeah. And now I need you to pay it forward and feed me some of your desserts. Yeah, but while we're uh, waiting on that, let's go ahead and cut to our good friend, Lyle. Lyle brings us some Christmas spirit to your living room wherever you're watching us with Emmanuel. Merry Christmas, Jesus. Merry
Thank you, Lyle. Man, I used to love singing that song with him back in our choir days. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hey, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Bobby. You know I can sing. No. Emmanuel. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whatever. Well, if you guys are just tuning in, we are Food for the Show, and this is TMB's Christmas with Friends special. In 2020 and 2021, we didn't suggest any to-dos because we weren't even sure what was going to happen because of that kick in the face that we uh, that we got and we're still trying to uh, bounce back from. But we really wanted to give you a list of some things that you should maybe consider doing in 2023. So check it out. We're back. So, Bobby, what do you think you want to do different or try in 2023? I know for me, I am really going to just go for what I want in 2023. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to just put it out there in the atmosphere. First, I'm going to pray about it, of course. I'm going to pray about it, make sure that it's something I should be doing. And then I'm just going to go for it, man. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be kind to myself making sure that I plan some me time uh, and treating myself because often I don't I don't do a lot of that. I don't matter of fact I never do that really. I don't plan out me time just for myself to just read a book or relax in a bath or just go do something for myself. So I'm planning that in twenty twenty three. For sure. Yeah I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that too and I'm gonna get back to like some money. I feel like I just kinda took the year off even think about that at all. Mm. But I need to. So it's going to be that. Getting back to make money? Yeah. All right. Well, now that we have got that out of the way, we are ready to try my dessert. So while Bobby brings my dessert out, we're going to check out the spoken word artist. So that the world may know peace is the whole reason for the Christmas story. I don't normally open with my punchline, but after this year, I think we can all agree peace has been hard enough to find. So I'm not looking to waste your time with clever wordplay or metaphors. I just know we need hope more than ever before. Because unlike ever before, you can literally read never-ending hurt on Facebook posts and in Twitter feeds. And almost every week, it seems we create another hashtag headstone, followed up by arguments with no regard to just how hard Christmas is going to be for a family in that home on this year. So many protests welling up out of passionate fear, filling the streets over political people we will never meet, 
I see people placing their hope in promises that we all know won't keep and still the news grows increasingly bleak with stories of tragedy after catastrophe. Rumors of economic shatterings, a drug epidemic no one's talking about Cause we traded truth for substitutes and they ain't really working out So I think if the world is to ever know peace, there couldn't be a better time than now In this Christmas season where we can run back to that sacred account It's been echoed for ages on end A prophecy of a holy God to struggling sinful men that says In order for the world to know peace A child must be born and to us a son will be given. The prophecy then states the government will be his alone for the lifting. His names will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and our Prince of Peace. As for the greatness of his government and peace within, they say there will be no end to it. Absolutely no finite measurement. Such a promise as this held all of creation in breathlessness for over 700 years without a single shred of evidence. But then on a midnight clear in Bethlehem, a star proclaimed God was finally with men. It was the first recorded Christmas held in a dirty, dirty stable where God incarnate laid as a baby in the manger. All of heaven sang of a savior and shepherds came with tears bigger than Cubs fans in November. The world's first time with Christ is why we celebrate every December. December, my friends, I'll say it again, that the world may know peace is the real reason for Christmas. This isn't a ploy to make you forget about pain and reality. It's just so you know my God's in the business of being peace to humanity. So down to earth he came, knowing full well he would have to be pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. He took all of our punishment so we might be free and by his wounds we might meet peace. I hope you're getting this. Peace isn't found in a feeling. Jesus Christ is peace. And I wrote this just so that you could meet him. Merry Christmas. That was dope. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just like I hate to admit that I'm thoroughly enjoying this dessert. Called Ambrosia. Or whatever it's called. Bobby tried to name it Sunrise to throw me off because he didn't want to let you guys know that he was making me ambrosia because he knows that I hate ambrosia. Hey, I'm right there with you. I never thought that. You know, I didn't put marshmallows and all that old dumb mess here because I don't want to do that. Yeah. Would you like that? No. Right. So I chose better fruits because most ambrosias don't have like sweet apples and stuff like that. It. That it has like berries and the cherries, whatever you call those, mm. pineapples, peaches. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. It's just been so long that I've hated it. I've hated it as I was a kid growing up. Out of uh, five stars, I'll give it a four. It's not bad. I'm going to make it better than this. Trust I'll, give, I'll give it a four. But you guys, we are almost done, and I wanted to let you know that I am coming back. I'm coming back. Uh, next year, stronger and better with my new show, the I Am Talitha Kume Show, where I am going to be combining all of my former shows and ideas into one big variety show with everything that I love to talk about and hopefully everything you want to hear about. The goal of the show is to enlighten, encourage, inspire, and engage. And I just want to have a show, um, not to hear myself talk, or spill tea about people or celebrities who have no real purpose in our lives. And I'm not knocking any of those shows, but we have enough of those shows already. And so I took a whole, a whole I took a whole year off to regroup, refocus after the passing of my dad, like I told you guys earlier, uh, my hero. Um, and I believe that he helped to mold this gift that God gave me. And now I just need to walk in. I need to walk in it with Bobby B's help of course and it's just been a nagging on me for years to be able to continue to do this one because i love it and uh two just because i feel like i'm called to do it just to kind of talk about some things and let you guys know um, some of the news that we're not hearing about or that we're not talking about and um also to let you know that you absolutely matter 
wherever you are in life right now, you matter. And God has not forgotten about you. So you guys stay tuned into that. entrepreneurship they say that it's hard and I know that it is because it's just you and you don't really have a whole lot of help but I think that the best thing about entrepreneurship is that you're in control. Welcome to Food for the Soul presents Intimate Conversations with Talitha Kume and I am your host Talitha so, Kume. So for our last theme for the month I chose nature or nurture as our theme for uh, this month because it's been such a Weird, weird year, you guys. Important news develops at all hours of the day and night. And that means the reporting work and resources behind everything you hear on KNPR must be supported by the sustained energy of people who care. People like you. And that means your continuing strong support is essential to all of the rewarding moments you spend with KNPR. Thanks for listening tonight. My name is Talitha Burris. And this is KNPR and KNPR.org. It's your girl Talitha Kume with Food for the Soul presents, and we are live here at the Botham Jean Foundation Gala event, you guys. I want to ask one question. I have one question for all of you guys. When Amber is found guilty, what laws do you think that we can change? So you guys, we are here live at the Frame for Frame Film Festival, and I am here with one of my favorite Denzel actors, Snipes. Yeah. Denzel Snipes, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. The summary for me is the uh, the fact that all lives matter in my person. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like all lives matter, and so e even though we have this whole thing about the Black Lives Matter movement, I get it. Yeah. But all lives matter. Kids, um, you know, older people, uh, black lives, white lives, Asian lives. It doesn't matter. Lives matter, man. And so yeah. I think y'all need to go back to the drawing board <laughs> when it comes to that. We can't just categorize everybody and say, okay, well, their life matters more than this life or that life matters right. more than this life. It's all about, you know, sustaining the human race. That's my personal. In these last few minutes of our show, we wanted to end with our good friend Terry to give you some words of encouragement this season and going into next year. Hello everyone. I pray that this video finds you in good health and in good spirits. If you have a prayer request, please put that request in the comments. I promise I will pray for you. And you can just say pray for me. You don't have to be specific. God knows exactly what you stand in the need of. As you can see by my decorations, we are fast approaching Christmas as well as New Year. And so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, we always say that Jesus is the reason for the season, but we all know as believers, Jesus is the reason we breathe. Jesus is the reason we live. Jesus is the reason we open our eyes every morning to a day filled with brand new mercies. We should have a praise on our lips every day, every day. And I am never in a rush to December 25th to give Jesus glory, honor, and praise. I'm trying to do that every single day. So I pray that that's your heart, your mind, with regards to our amazing Lord and Savior. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible points out that she's a woman from Canaan. She's of Canaan. The reason that's important is because she is a descendant of the enemies of the house of Israel. And then she identifies him as son of David. Son of David is a messianic title. So not only is she a descendant of the enemies of the house of Israel, but she knows who he is. I'm emphasizing that for a reason. So initially when she cries out to him, her request, he plays it to the left. He doesn't get it and pay her any mind. And I don't know if this emboldened the disciples to speak up, but they urged Jesus to send her away. 
for she cries after us. She's getting on our nerves. I'm paraphrasing, but send her on somewhere. And I'm not sure if that meant give her what she wants and send her on, or she's not one of us, send her on, shoo her away. In response to that, Jesus says, I was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This woman knows who he is. She knows nobody else can meet her need but him. And she probably also knows that he's healed and provided for those that are just like her, Gentiles. So she gets on her knees and worships Jesus and says, Lord, help me. She was filled with faith because she knew who he was. And she says to him, even the little dogs will catch the crumbs that fall from the master's table. So she's saying, I don't care how I got to get it. I will sit at your feet. I will kneel down. I will do whatever it takes to receive whatever falls from your table because she knew who he was. And he said to her, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It wasn't about her birthright. It wasn't about her nationality, her ethnicity. It wasn't about her gender. It wasn't about anything but her faith. She believed that Jesus is not just the Son of God, but God the Son, King of kings and Lord of lords. I just want to encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord, to increase your faith, because we're in a time right now where the light is getting dimmer and dimmer. And as the people of God, as those who have put all their hope, faith, and trust in Christ, we are the light of the world. And we cannot be undercover Christians. We have a gift that we need to share in obedience to the charge that was given to us by Christ. We need to get out there and share the gospel. We need to get on the rooftops and call for repentance. That's how Jesus started his ministry. In order to repent, you have to first know that you're a sinner. Often people don't understand, because if you ask a person, do you think you're a good person? Most people will say yes. And what we have to do, what our responsibility is, is to help them understand why they need a savior. We have to convey to them there is a law. God is holy. He's righteous and he's perfect. He's our creator. And he has a way that is right. And we go against that when we lie, when we cheat, when we steal. There's somebody watching me right now who doesn't understand what's going on, who just can't understand why they are going through what they are going through. You feel like you take 10 steps forward and you get knocked 15 steps back. You're looking for the answer. You're trying to understand. You can't make heads or tails of it. I am telling you what I know because it's been revealed by the Holy Spirit. It is a supernatural understanding that if you taste and see that the Lord is good, that Jesus is who he says he is, that he can set you free from the penalty of sin, from the guilt and shame of sin, that he can give you the peace that passes all understanding. I'm telling you, you can be standing in the middle of a storm and you will have peace in Christ Jesus. Invest in your eternity. Say yes to Jesus. Treat the word of God like oxygen. Because if you do not, you will suffocate in the worries and the distractions of this world. Today is the day of salvation. Please say yes to Jesus.
Well, that's our show. Well, that's our show, and I've come full circle. I'm an artist, and I'm sick of it. Bye, Bobby. Bobby, whoa. I was going to say about my art. Okay. Goodness. Golly. I'm still doing art and <laughs> fashion, but for anyone who really knows me, they know I started way back in the music game. Yeah. And I'm back. Yeah. He's back. So if you follow me, follow me at the real me on Instagram. And if you're following me, continue to see what I'm doing too, guys. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. music's gonna get really good. Yeah. And I am Talitha Kume. And I am Big Bobby B. And we thank you for tuning in. If you didn't catch the premiere, we hope you catch the playback. And this has been T and B's Christmas with Friends special. Yes, and that's our show. And our show is sponsored in part by Moot the Barber. Chris products, Orly Worldwide, and Big Bobby B Beats. If you want to be a guest on our show or a featured artist, hit us up at www.foodforthesoulmediagroup.press or email us at foodforthesoulpresents at gmail.com. Yes, he got it right. He got it right. He got it right. And if you would like to become a sponsor or donate, you can cash app us at Burris Creates or PayPal us at Food. For the soul. And we are out. Love y'all. Great Rosia. That's Southeast High School right there. Over there. Daddy's old school where he got kicked out of for fighting. Two streets over on 58th and South Bend, and that's where he lived. I hope uh, most of all people take away truth and understanding. Just a better understanding of self-awareness, all of that. It's all going to be in this documentary. There's going to be an awakening from this documentary. I mean, I don't know what, he probably did this in Kansas City. I'm sure he did this in California. But what he did in Dallas, Texas, it means the world to so many. I'm hoping that people will see that he's human. You know, I looked at him as, I looked at him as Superman basically, but he was, but in the day he was human. He's a phenomenal person. That was his heart. That was his heart. That's why so many people loved and respected him. I think people will get um, a better uh, idea or a close up into a man that was extremely dedicated to the purpose that God had on his life. I think they'll be able to see his heart, who he was as a person. The man, the myth, the legend, uh, Dr. Bold and, and, and uh, organically, just who he was as a person. So hope y'all put his life in there so they can really get in there and, and, and understand the process of Willie, Willie J. Bolden. He can hold your secrets too. <laughs> Hell my. <laughs> you for sure hell my.